Welcome to Nofi Paints. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made these really cheap and effective gaming tiles. They do take a little bit of time and effort to make, but for a cheap alternative to the gaming tiles out there, these will do the job nicely. With that, let's crack in. Before going into how I made the tiles, I'll just run through now what materials I used. So for the actual base of the tile, I've gone with these floor mats. I got these in a pack of nine, they were $4. So dirt cheap, I bought two packs of these, so I got 18 tiles. I ended up using 16 for this project. The rest of the materials here, I got some 3D printed bits, leftover sprue, different tubes and straws. These great pieces I always use for everything, and I've also got some round ones for this project. Some textured plastic card, some standard plastic card, some random bits of junk, some garden meshing, and a few different shaped plastic card rods. But it doesn't really matter what bits you use. The main thing here is I want all the bits to be flush to the board. So they can't be thicker than the thickness of the board. But the shape on top doesn't matter. So the first thing I decided to do was cut off these jigsaw locking sections on the sides. I was going to keep them on to keep the tiles at 12 inches by 12 inches. But thinking about the end result, I don't want this jigsaw pattern to appear on the tiles. So I decided to cut them down. Doing this brings the tile down to 10 inches by 10 inches. Which is perfectly okay for me as I'll be playing only friendly games on these tiles. So just using my hobby saw, I just went around cutting all these end bits off. And when cutting these, I just took my time cutting them as flush as possible to the main piece. For each pattern on the tiles, I didn't plan these beforehand. As I was going along making them, the ideas would just pop into my head. All the tiles are made the same way. The only thing that's different is the layout of each one. For all the bits I put onto the tiles, I wanted them to sit flush to the top. So when I put my terrain down, nothing interferes with it. So for this tile here, I'm just dividing it into four quarters. Using my standing knife just to put a small cut into the tile but not cutting all the way through. Then using a file and a lighter, I'm just heating up the metal on the file. And I'm just pulling this along the cut, melting away part of the tile and leaving a little channel here for some plastic card to go into. Into this channel I put a little bit of glue, then just slide the plastic card rod along the channel. Once that's in position, I just use my file to press it down carefully until it was flush with the top of the tile. For most of the tiles, I just got a random bit. Using a pencil, just marked out where it's going to be. Then with my hobby knife, just cut out that piece of tile. Then filled in the cutout section with the piece I'd marked out. Any piece that had like a little bit of meshing or you could see through, I put a little bit of flat plastic card at the back of it just to cover it up. Then using both super and PVA glue, I just glued these from the back side down. Another effect I tried on some of these boards was a melted look, like some acid had spilt and hit the floor. So to do this, I took my lighter and slowly melted away part of the tile. When using the lighter, I did this slowly and carefully as I don't want the whole tile to go up in flames. With all the detail added, now it's time to join the tiles together. When I put the two tiles together, I noticed there was a lot more gaps than I would like. So to fix this problem, I took a little bit of cardboard sheet and cut myself a piece the length of the tile by 20 mils. To stick down the cardboard, I applied some PVA glue to the piece. And when gluing it down to the tile, I try to make it as flush to the edge as possible. While this doesn't fix up the joint issues 100%, when you gave me on top of the tiles with the scenery on top, it's almost unnoticeable. With all four strips glued down onto the tile, once they had fully dried to the board, I then got myself some watered down PVA glue and applied a few light coats of this to the top of the cardboard. Doing this is for two reasons. The first is to help glue it to the tile and the second is to harden up the cardboard to prevent any damage when gaming on top of it. To give some of the tiles a little bit more detail, using my ruler and a piece of plastic here, I just went around the tile pressing into it, forming different shapes and patterns that I can paint up later. The last thing to do to the tiles was to add some battle damage. I did this with my clippers and hobby knife, just going around the tile, cutting, chopping and taking out divots. And with all that damage applied, the tiles are ready for a coat of paint. Thanks for watching Nephi Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Gotcha!